we haven't really been in uh, a lot of the comments tonight. Uh, just wanted to go ahead and get these talking points out the way. So we definitely go ahead and queue it up, Q&A it up here for the last 10 minutes. Y'all go ahead and throw your questions in there. <clears throat> but while we're doing that, y'all make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like, share, subscribe button to the Heavy Hitters Live. Live, baby, live. We appreciate y'all, man. A well as Jew talk sports for the daily man. Falcons news update, as well as upset. what's the word? Dirty bird. I don't like being shown out. And Jew been like he been showing out lately with these videos, but he been knocking them down, boy. Hey, hey, like I said, that's the minister, man. That that's why I said you you got you got to remember that's what he that's what he's supposed that's to. That's what do. he does. That's what he does. He, he lives up to it. We try to get him to 3,000, 3K over here, man. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yes. Absolutely. I got like for both of y'all, too, while we while we talking about it. I seen Brian Peoples put it in there. I keep forgetting about him. He put it Yeah, DeAngelo Malone. Oh, yeah. That's another one. Yeah. DeAngelo Malone, because I thought that he was going to be one of those guys that could be an edge player or, you know, used as an outside linebacker and – the last regime just used him mainly as just like a special teams player. So what do y'all think? Did he get on the bad side of, you know, or he, did he just not fit in what Ryan Nielsen was doing? I know we were deep like in that position, but I wanted to see him get more opportunities because I feel like he kind of gives me the vibes of like a, a Leonard Floyd, like a guy that can close really fast. He's not the biggest guy, like as far as mm -hmm. great at stopping the run. But to me, he's one of those guys that can close. Like, if you're just looking for somebody on third and long that, okay, if you got a guy like Kyler Murray running around, mm -hmm. you know, Angela Malone is one of those faster, you know, more athletic type of edges. So what do you guys think about D'Angelo Malone? Like, he get on their bad side? Because I always forget yeah. about because they didn't use him really. You know what? I I don't know. I mean, like you said, like my, my hopes are definitely still high on him. Uh, regardless on him not really getting as much of the playing time as we thought he was going to get. Um, he could have possibly got on the bad side of Ryan Nelson, but you have to remember, too, Ryan Nelson was like relying on those veterans a lot more. Right. As a, as a defensive coordinator than the year before where he got drafted. Right. So it just it's just one of those cases where the experience of a lot of the guys we had in the front seven trumped the, the well the opportunity for D'Angelo Malone. But like I said, right now, like when you got Jimmy Lake and Raheem Morris, um, this is a perfect opportunity for him to show that he is that guy we thought he was when they picked him in the third round. Right. Right. I definitely think he has some upside. I mean, he has a lot of talent. Like in college, coming out of Western Kentucky, he was one of those guys. When I look at his film, it was like, okay, he could do some things. Coming off the edge, he got that explosiveness. He can close on the quarterback really quick. You know, like he's, I said, he's not the biggest guy, but you don't have to be super, you know, if you're athletic, that can kind of trump being super strong and stuff like that if you can bend the edge. And he seemed like he was one of those guys. And I think in this particular scheme, as you was mentioning, Kay, like mm -hmm. with Jimmy Lake, because he likes to use a lot of pressure, like zone blitzes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like even if you got to stand him up and just move him around, I think that he can use his athleticism. That's why I really think, like you were saying, if we don't go heavy in the draft in the trenches, even though I think we should, I really feel like our linebackers, like the um, landmans, I feel like we're going to see a lot more blitzes from the corners and linebackers in general. Oh, yes. Linebackers on this team. So that'll kind of take away from having to have a bunch of edge rushers that we keep calling them or yeah. outside linebackers. <laughs> don't use your linebackers, and that's some of like the something that the Steelers. If you guys go back and look at the Steelers, the Lamar Woodleys, uh, the James Ferriers, the guys that they have in their three four and sets, they really would use their linebackers to blitz. You know yep. what I'm saying? A whole lot. So maybe that's what we'll see with this Falcons team. It's like they're gonna say Caden Ellis and these guys. They gonna get a lot of a lot of the. Oh sack. yeah, gonna be the guys coming, and we just gonna build a fortified front, which that means we're gonna get a bunch of.
Hey Falcons fans, your boy Bad Mike here. If you like this video, hit this video right here on the screen, all right? This, I want to know what you guys think about what the Atlanta Falcons should do with that edge position. You know, Diaz and Malone is one of those guys that could quite possibly be it or he could be out of here. But what should the Atlanta Falcons do with that edge position, all right? Now that they passed on Hassan Reddick or was it real to begin with, all right? But let me know what you guys think about what the Atlanta Falcons should do with that edge position right now.